welcome everyone to another series of our interviews, perspective interviews. We are discussing with leaders of the industry how everybody is uh, dealing with this uh, terrible pandemic called COVID-19. And today we're joined with a vice president, actually executive vice president for Living Water Resorts in Collingwood, Ontario, Mr. Warren Smith. Warren, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Gaetan. It's my pleasure. Great. Hey, before we start talking business, uh, how is you and you know, your family faring through this uh, terrible pandemic? Well, you know, we're like everybody else trying to do the best that we can. We, um, you know, one of the things that's, that's come out, that, if anything, that you can say is positive is, you know, there's, there's been a lot of uh, time for reflection, a lot of time to spend time together as a family and, you know, maybe return some of that balance back to life that sometimes we forget about when we get busy, um, you know, trying to, trying to do so many things at work all the time. So that's been one, one good thing for, for our family, for sure. So we've had a lot of time to do, get outdoors, exercise, and, and just spend quality time together. Well, you certainly have a wonderful family, Cheryl and Sydney, and you're very fortunate that way. So uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate hearing this. You manage and you operate a beautiful property in Northern Ontario, Living Water Resorts, quite large, actually. Um, when this came off in, let's say, early March, the offset, what was the immediate reaction of your, of your team with this? Well, I'm sure again, like like most other places, I mean, there was a lot of unknown, uh, which creates a little bit more fear. Um, you know, we had a lot of people, which you still maybe see a little bit, but not so much, you know, wondering uh, how serious is this going to get? What are we going to have to do? Um, you know, do I shake hands with people? Do I not? Um, you know, so just some standard things, I think that, that people had to deal with. But, you know, as it progressively got a little bit more serious, of course, and we had to close the business, we had to make some fairly tough decisions. And, um, you know, it's it's, we've we've been trying to keep in contact with them um, on a pretty regular basis. Um, we we made the step to to for a lot of them to pay ninety percent of their wage for thirty days, um, you know, with with company funds just to try and help any way that we could. Um, you know, it's gone on a little longer than that. So uh, you know, the Canadian government has been has been pretty good to jump in and offer the the emergency response benefit and the the wage subsidy program now. So we're just trying to trying to figure out and plan to to get back to somewhat normal or what the new normal will be. Your situation is fairly unique in Ontario in the fact that you have a lot of drive-in guests uh, in comparison to Mexico, certainly the Caribbean where we are right now, there is no flying here. So it's put tourism at a stall and nothing is moving. But with the greater uh, Toronto area that, that you have as a whole, do you feel you'll be able to get back online a little faster than most properties down south? I, I think so. We're, we're very fortunate to have the majority of, of our owner base and member base um, be from the GTA. So, you know, all of the statistics and we've all seen, I, I think, but, um, you know, a, a lot of people are looking to travel closer to home. Um, we're very, very fortunate in the, in the sense that we're only two hours from, from downtown Toronto. So we're perfectly positioned for that. So um, we're already seeing a response um, with owners and members contacting us saying, you know, when are you open? When can I come back? Um, so we, we know that um, we're actually probably going to be busier with our own members um, than we have been in, in, in a long, long time. As a whole, you have a great rela in a relationship with your members. I know that's always been very important to you. How are your members as a whole responding to this? You must communicate with them, obviously. And what's their response? You know what, their response has been um, pretty good. In fact, um, when you, you mentioned about communicating with them, we've been very uh, cognizant to send out um, newsletters every week to them, just updating them on the situation. Um, things like mentioning to them, we're, we're going to do a, a comprehensive analysis of what this means for their HOA fees or for their usage fees. Um, we've had a lot of good response to that. We um, asked them to be partners with us um, in, in, the, in the wage subsidy the wage subsidies for some of the staff. And we actually had quite a few of our members donate to that program. And we were able to do things like um, give uh, Mother's Day baskets um, to a lot of the staff so they could have a nice meal on Mother's Day and then this kind of thing. And you know what, it's been a real partnership um, for us with our owners and the response has been very good. And in a, in a very, you know, fortunate uh, turn of events, I suppose, we've, we've communicated with them more than ever. Um, you know, we, we always try and communicate with them uh, obviously, but um, we've had um, more isolated time to be able to really craft these things and communicate with them more than we generally would have. And it's, it's been a real good lesson for us. Well, it sounds like you've got a great relationship with your members, which is key. I was uh, 
talking to a member recently from another property and told me in a very blunt way, said if the worst thing, the worst scenario for us is we lose one year maintenance fee, but we get to keep our membership comparison to the tragic tragedies that are happening around the world right now. It's not so bad. And I thought that was a very unselfish uh, statement. Have you heard anything along those lines from your members? Um, very similar, yeah, Gaetan. I, I think, you know, it's really reaffirmed in people's minds, you know, why they bought it and, and, and you know, what, what it is they were trying to plan for the future for, which is really, you know, time with family and connection with loved ones. I mean, that's what this stuff is all about. And, you know, one of the things we've been talking about, not only with our members, but internally as a staff is, you know, this is, you know, this is not a different message for Timeshare. This is the, this is the message that Timeshare has been saying, you know, for years and years and years since it was created, you know, spend time with family, uh, make a plan to do so, make sure you have that quality time. And I, I think as the world's gotten busier and busier, um, you know, there's been less and less of that. And, and I think this has really brought people back to realize that, you know what, this, this product, in my opinion, is more relevant right now than it was a year ago today. Well, historically, tourism is always greatly affected initially when there's a crisis, a financial crisis or a health crisis like there is right now. But if we go back even the last 50 years, the first industry to bounce back seems to be tourism and vacation ownership in particular, where people... I've actually put a dollar value to their time away. And it seems that it's, if anything, that we're hopeful that our industry is going to come back probably faster than most industries. Well, you know, Gaetan, one of the beautiful things about a timeshare resort in relation to a regular hotel, you know, is we already have 50% occupancy when we open the door right where you know a lot of the hotels have to start to drive business up again and how you know how are we how are we going to fill the hotel we already start with it with a 50 percent base and and you know even that was our estimate it's actually looking like it's going to be about 65 percent occupancy right out of the gate which is which is very good um but you know i i just i, I think that um when you look at the parallel to 2008 with the just with the usage fees and the and the the loans um, we didn't know what to expect, obviously. Um, we prepared, you know, to, we were going to have to offer um, uh, payment plans, deferrals, and all this kind of thing. And, you know, our paper has still performed very strong on the loans because people do see it um, as something that they really want to keep. And that's a very close parallel to 2008 when everybody thought that no one's going to pay their timeshare loan. And of course, they all did. And we all know the story about how the banks ended up coming back to the industry and were surprised at the performance of that paper. Um, this has been very, very similar for us. And we've had, of course, some situations and some deferral and some requests, but it's been much, much less than what we anticipated. Traditionally, our industry has uh, a different model. The way the properties are built is very large. There's a lot of space. And I know I've been to your property. It's a beautiful, beautiful property. You've got a lot of land, a lot of space. Social distancing is a little easier than to a hotel where it's on the vertical. You're stuck yes. in elevators and there's not a lot of common areas. Uh, it should assist you and your members into feeling a little bit more comfortable um, about them coming back. But what measures are you putting in place to give them that extra comfort, comfort that Living Water Resources is doing everything they can to keep the place clean, safe, and for them? Boy, that's a that's a long list, Gaetan. But you know, at the end of the day, um, we, you know, just from a staffing perspective, first uh, to give the members and the owners comfort, um, we have a staff checkpoint where um, we will be doing things like staff temperature. You know, asking the questions that we're supposed to ask. Um, you know, one of the things that a lot of people, you know, are worried about is if I'm if I'm sick. Am I going to lose my job if I'm away for, for too long? So we've been very clear with the staff to say, look, if you are stiff, uh, sick, of course, it, it's not going to have any, any bearing or effect on your job and really giving them comfort about that. Um, so that we're, the staff are actually going to wear wristbands to say that they've been through the COVID checkpoint for guest comfort. Um, the guests uh, also um, will be aware of what those white wristbands look like. They're going to be asked questions upon entry. Um, we have sanitizer uh, stations. Um, at every entrance, um, we've got social distancing signs. I mean, these things are all pretty general, but one of the things we are doing uh, very particularly is we're going to a COVID-19 check-in procedure where every guest is, is getting almost like a curbside check-in now where they're getting a call uh, before and much like a concierge call they're going to meet a personal agent um, when they check in and they'll physically be walked to their room by one person so we're mitigating having a large large amount of traffic in the, in the lobby um, at any given time 
All, all great initiatives. Obviously, the most affected is the unfortunate ones that have lost their jobs. And even though you've had some assistance to your staff, and I commend you on this, it's been more than a month. Obviously, it's been three, four, five, five months for a lot of people. So being one of the leaders that's helping sustain this industry, and if you had a chance to address those frontline people and all the people that are really desperate times right now, hoping that the, the leaders help you know, this industry come back uh, online as fast as possible. And you had a chance to address them, give them hope that we will come back and the jobs will be back. What would you tell them? Well, you know, Gaetan, first of all, I would say my heart goes out to, to, to all of them. You know, I mean, it's not been easy for anybody. And, you know, we've been trying to work diligently to, to try and return to as normal of a situation as we can as soon as possible. Um, we all know that we're hampered by government restriction and, 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 and policy and, and this type of stuff that's needed. Um, but, you know, the, the Canadian government, I, I do want to say, um, has been very, very good in the programs they've put out with the Com Canadian Emergency Response Benefit, um, you know, with them paying up to 75% of an insured amount um, for employees so that you can keep some employed. Um, you know, we, we, it's really helped us to be able to bring more people back quicker. And, you know, in terms of hope, um, I would say that just much like we were talking about earlier with 65%, you know, when, when we open the door, I, we're really anticipating and hoping that it's not gonna be very long before everybody um, in, in our organization can, can come back and return to the level of work that, 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 they're, that they're accustomed to and that they need. And it just, you know, our heart goes out to, to trying to make that happen as, as, as seamlessly and efficiently as possible. Well, thank you so much, Warren, for your time. I know you're very busy at these times, and I wish you good luck, stay safe, and keep doing everything right for everyone. So thank well, you again, Warren. For you, Gaetan, anytime. Well, that was Warren Smith. He's the executive vice president of a beautiful property. It's only a couple hours drive north of Toronto, and it really is the playground of this whole 5 million group of people. There's the Collingwood, Blue Mountain area, beautiful area, and it sounds like they are doing pretty well everything they can to ensure the not only the safe return of their members, but to help their staff return back to work in due time. So thank you very much and we will return soon.